Hi, I'm Danny the Plumber, and today I'm going to be reviewing how to solder a copper pipe. Um, first of all, some of the things that we use when we're soldering are a wire brush. This is a three quarter, and this is for half inch fittings. Wire brushes are used to clean the inside of a copper fitting. All right, next I've got uh, lead-free solder, and this is used for any potable drinking water application. You need that. You can't have lead in your solder for uh, drinking water. Uh, next is a striker used to start the ignition for my tank here. Here's my tank that I use on uh, most of the time. I've got also a larger one. This is acetylene gas right here. And this is a good size that plumbers use, easy to crawl into the house with, but not the super small ones that you get at like Home Depot and stuff that'll run out of gas pretty quickly. Um, so this is acetylene gas. You can also use propane and you can use matte gas. Propane, um, when soldering is not going to burn, it's not gonna start heating up until about 3,600 degrees, uh, where matte gas is a little bit better. You might see that that burns at 37, uh, approximately 100 degrees, but acetylene gas here is the hottest of them all, burning it over 4,600 degrees. So it'll heat that pipe and your fittings up much quicker to allow faster soldering. So this is what most plumbers are using today, especially um, you know residential homes and stuff like that. This is my tank uh, right here. You can switch the heads, the tips, and for different uses, like this is a pretty small one for like a uh, half inch or even three quarter pipe, which is found mostly in residential homes. They also have uh, different tips. This one's a bit bigger. And this one has uh, an uh, ignition on it. So I can spark that if this was on and get the flame going. Kind of nice. Okay, next, you need a reamer, always need to ream your pipes. And what that is, is just basically deburring that pipe. So you have the pipe here and you need to remove that um, outer little um, lip in here. And the reason that that is done is because without reaming each and every piece of pipe that you cut, the water is going to have a swirling effect and that will cause pinholes down the line in your copper lines. So, an absolute must. Next is the emery cloth or sand cloth as I call it. And you take a piece like that and the proper way, the way the plumbers do it is they take the piece of sand cloth and they strip it down like that. Once you get a hang of this, this is a much faster and better method of cleaning the pipe. So what it should look like is that when you're done. And as I said before, that fitting has to be cleaned like that. Then you would apply the flux and at that point you could solder it up. Next is the flux itself right here is uh the flux is just <clears throat> uh, needs to be applied to both the pipe and the fitting more on that in a second without the flux soldering is completely impossible i've got a flux brush here and you can see what that's for just to apply the flux itself i like to use a marker or a pencil is fine to mark the pipes and i'll show you how i do that in a second uh, here are a few different um, tools, uh, tubing cutters that I use. So this is a larger one for, you know, three quarter and up, one inch, two inch, whatever. Uh, next one down is a pretty small one that we use for half inch copper, three quarter also. And here's one just for half inch copper, but this one allows you to get in some real tight places. Putting it on there, you spin it and the pipe will cut off. All right, so to cut copper, you will need your tubing cutter. And as I said, these things come in all shapes and sizes. And you'll start by going back and forth on this thing. You don't want to go in one continuous direction, especially at first. 
And then as you go around, you will tighten the back handle here and keep proceeding like this and quickly that pipe will cut off. At this point, it is essential that we deburr with our reaming tool right here. You want to make sure that the little uh, burr does not go back into the pipe because you can cause cloggages in aerators and things like that. So remove that always. Next step, just as I showed you before, we'll clean the pipe with our sand cloth. Once that's nice and shiny, you'll get your fitting. In this case, I've got a half inch, a 90 degree elbow. We will clean that up so it's nice and clean like that. This is, this, this is kind of scuffing it up too so the solder and the flux can kind of adhere to it. Um, once we've got that in this, what I like to do is push it in there, make sure I can visually see that it's all the way seated get my marker and put a little line on it. I do this because I've seen too many times plumbers will accidentally solder the joint here and it's barely hanging on. And in a year or so, it'll pop off because it doesn't have a full uh, solder onto it. So I like to put a line there. Next, we will Grab our flux, flux both the elbow and the pipe, like so. Push it in. I forgot to mention, I always like to have, while I'm soldering, both a dry rag and a wet rag, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, next, I'll clean up the residual flux around the joints here, and we're ready to solder. While soldering, you want to make sure that you keep completely around this elbow and the pipe here. And you'll notice that that flux is starting to flow right now, so it's almost hot enough. And I'll just keep on moving this flame all around here like this. At this point, I like to take my dry rag, wipe off any excess flux, this will help prevent the flux, uh, the solder from running, dripping down the pipe. And simply, it's all you need. One side's done. This side will be even quicker because it's already heated up. Done. As soon as you see one little droplet fall out, you probably got too much already. Let that thing cool naturally. Don't start spraying it down with water or a wet rag or anything like that. But that's simply how to solder.
As you can see down here, the solder is completely around the pipe here, um, and that's a, a, a good soldering, a good solder joint. You can see that it's completely around the whole thing, and wiping it down with that dry rag, which I did um, before I applied the solder, I was wiping the uh, heated flux off of it. What that did is, especially because I had a little angle to it, it it didn't drip down. If I didn't do that, the solder would drip down and just be real ugly on the pipe here. So that, that's a good solder joint here. Okay, here are a few plumber's tips on uh, and tricks on how to solder. If there's any water whatsoever coming in through the pipe, you will not be able to solder whatsoever. And you get this oftentimes when your shutoff valve, your ball valve, or your gate valve don't shut off 100%. A little water will start trickling through. Or if it's a, especially in multiple story applications, you're gonna get a lot of residual water coming from upstairs, dripping down. And if you're trying to solder, it's dripping down here, you're trying to solder right here, you're not going to be able to whatsoever one trick that the plumbers use is we take a little bit of white bread. So you will take <clears throat> your piece of bread and if water is coming down this way and it's dripping, not under a lot of pressure, just a little pressure, stick your couple pieces of white bread inside the pipe right here, just like this. At that point, you can make your solder joint connection right here because that water is going to be absorbed by the bread here and it'll give you enough time to solder that thing usually. After you're done soldering with the bread in there, you're gonna make sure you wanna flush it out in somewhere like a bathtub first because you don't want that bread to get caught in the aerators and things like that. You can also buy this thing. This is called a Jet Sweat. The company is Jet Sweat. And this basically is a little rubber right here that you could put in, usually with a ball valve like this. And so you would take that, put your ball valve in here. If the water was coming down this way and affecting your solder over here, you can add a ball valve, stick this thing in here, tighten it up, so that gasket expands and then you could make your solder connection here. At that point, you would remove this, shut off that ball valve and you could continue your soldering. And this, this, this ball valve would give you um, that shut off that you were looking for. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to cut a pipe very close to a fitting and there's not enough room here, or you just simply want to remove this thing, you can by desoldering the joint. Okay, another tip uh, when soldering is if you're in close proximity to something that you don't want to heat up, um, such as a hose bib like this, this hose bib has a rubber washer inside here and some O-rings in here. And if you got too close while soldering right here, it would melt that washer. And this is um, also like uh, for shower valves and stuff like that. They have a lot of parts that if they get too hot, they're gonna melt inside. So what I like to do if I'm ever in the situation where it's uh, very close quarters here. I like to simply take a pretty drenched wet rag, wrap it around whatever could be affected, and then I can make my solder connection here without worrying about melting or burning the, the rubbers, gaskets inside the hose bib like this. So that's one quick tip for soldering in close quarters. You always wanna make sure that you have a fire extinguisher or at least a bucket of water or something 
because oftentimes when we are soldering, we're soldering right up against wood or inside a wall or things like that. I always like to keep just a piece of metal and I can shim that metal behind wherever I'm soldering here and give uh, a little fire barrier uh, to protect the wood because it could catch on fire pretty quickly. They also make uh, heat barrier rags. You can see this one has been through it. Um, where th this thing is not going to burn very easily. It's going to take a long time for this thing to get burnt. You can wrap that, so you can put that behind somewhere or wrap it up with something like that. Uh, another thing they make is a uh, heat barrier putty. And you can apply this stuff to wood or wherever. If you're soldering very close, you can put some of that stuff on there and it's going to give it some fire protection as well. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this video on how to solder. Please don't forget to subscribe and if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. It helps with the channel. Thanks.